So the text block I'm using today is quite a large one. You obviously don't have to use one this big, it just depends on what you're binding. For my needle, I like to use a curved one because I find it easier to thread through the text block, but you can also use a normal straight needle. As you can see, I've already punched my text block with eight holes per signature. I put six of them quite close together just because that is my personal preference. But as you go through your binding journey, you'll find what works best for you. For the first signature, all you have to do is sew normally through the holes starting from the outside and then traveling through, make sure you leave a two to three inch tail for the end of the thread because we'll be tying this off later. Once you've done the first signature, I like to press it down with my bone folder to make sure the end result is flat and even. When getting the next signature, I make sure that the page numbers match up so everything is correct and in place, and then I pop it on top of the first signature. For the second signature, just go into the first hole with the thread from the first so they connect. When you come out of the second hole though, thread the needle under the first signature's thread to make a twist. Then thread it back into the signature's hole and continue like this for the rest of the signature. When you get to the end of the second signature, use the 2-3 to three inch tail to tie the two threads together. You can pull as tight as you would like, but as you continue, you will notice that this is a self-tightening technique, so you don't need to pull the thread that hard. I just use a simple double knot at the end of the stage. When we get to the third signature, we need to focus closely on the technique. Thread through the first hole as normal, but once we get to the second hole, we need to start the French link technique. You can see here the first two signatures are stacked on top of each other. The first signature is sewn normally, and then the second is done through a twist. The twist creates a tightening aspect and brings the thread upwards to tighten the threading of both signatures. We then tied the tail and the continuing thread together before placing the third signature on top of the second. This is where it can get a little bit confusing for some people. We need to take into account the sewing direction. Since we are starting from the left side, the sewing direction is to the right. We need to thread through the furthest gap, so not the gap closest to the second hole, but the third. This then creates a link on the right side of the twist. The next time we go around, this will be on the opposite side, so the left, but we'll get to that soon. You can see I'm continuing to use the right gap for the whole of the third signature. I'm just going to continue this technique through the entire signature until I get to the end. I tie off by threading through the second signature and creating a double knot. You don't have to use a double knot, I personally just like to, to give it a little bit extra security. For the fourth signature, the sewing direction has changed. We are now starting from the right and going to the left. So when we choose a gap to thread through, we go through the leftmost gap. 
The same technique we did for the third signature, but the directions are reversed. The way the French link works is that it tightens the thread through the twists and also creates an appealing look, so the most common use for this technique is actually to have the spine exposed, showing off the threading. I use it because of the tightening feature it has, even though I cover up the spines, so it really depends on how you want to use this threading technique. For the fifth signature, we just do exactly what we did for the third signature because the sewing direction is the same. We take the rightmost gap and then thread through there. This will be the same for the seventh, ninth, and eleventh signature. Unless you started sewing your text spot from the opposite side as me, then it'll be the even numbers, so two, four, six, eight. An easy way to decipher what side you need to thread through is to know what your sewing direction is. So choose the furthest most gap or look at the signature below and see what side you twist it on and then just do the opposite side for the signature you're currently sewing. You can see now I have five signatures here stacked on top of each other. You can see that every second twist is on the left side and then the other two are on the right. It should go left, right, left, right or right, left, right, left depending on what side you started from. If you have somehow ended up with two left twists stacked on top of each other or two right twists then you've done something wrong and accidentally repeated the technique instead of alternating it based on the sewing direction you're travelling in. I'm going to continue the French link technique, making sure I'm alternating the twist location based on the sewing direction. I also make sure to flatten down the signatures with my bone folder after every completed signature to make sure it remains as flat and even as possible when the book is finished. After I finish sewing, I make sure to tie off my final thread and then I cut away all of the excess threads. It's completely fine to change threads throughout your text block, especially if yours is a really large one like mine and you need more thread. Um, that's completely fine. If you're doing it based on the look of the French link technique, then try and measure out the amount of thread that you'll need beforehand so you don't need to keep switching out. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys and you're able to try this technique at home. Just remember the sewing direction and follow along with that alternating technique. 